Well, I was invited to talk about um, prevention of breast cancer in low and middle income countries. Potentially, 75% of cancers can be prevented. But for breast cancer, it is actually largely unpreventable. Only 10% of breast cancers can be prevented. And this 10% is where you find that there is a genetic mutation, such as the BRCA1 or the BRCA2, which can predispose to breast cancer. So in those sorts of cases, the only prevention is actually to remove both the breasts. But for the other 90% of breast cancers, we actually do not know the cause. We only talk about the risk factors which are responsible for breast cancer. And these risk factors are broadly divided into reproductive risk factors. Reproductive risk factors are those associated with the estrogens in your body. For example, if you have early menarche and late menopause, there's a prolonged period of exposure to estrogens and this predisposes you to breast cancer. So the risk is increased if you have early menarche or late menopause. That means you start your periods early or you end your periods later than the usual woman. So, and if you have your first child after the age of 35, it also increases your risk. If you have many children and you breastfeed your children for more than six months, it reduces the risk of breast cancer. Now, the second main broad, top, uh, broad uh, risk factors are the lifestyle. Okay? Now, there's actually no diet that can prevent breast cancer, but the incidence of breast cancer varies through, through, throughout the world. For example, the lowest incidence are actually found in the Asian women. And we think that it is because Asians tend to take a lot of soy-based products. The, but the data on whether soy prevents breast cancer is actually rather controversial because there are studies that show that um, consumption of large amounts of soy can actually protect you from breast cancer. These are actually population studies because populations that eat a lot of soy actually has a lower risk. The risk is actually highest in the Western world. And what are lifestyle factors would you think of in the Western world that predispose you to a higher incidence? This would also be, in a way, diet, lifestyle, because in the West, women are having their children later, they have less children, and they don't really breastfeed for long periods. So these are the risk factors that may reduce your risk of breast cancer. So <clears throat> other than that, um, well, most cancers are la breast cancers are largely unpreventable. So, what, so the other part of my lecture is the recommendations of what we can do to reduce the risk of breast cancer. So we advocate lifestyle um, changes and in the traditional Asian population, we would advise them not to change the diet because there are a lot of dietary changes. Now, the best way would be to have children early, but um, we do not really, because as a country develops and um, there is more women's liberation, so women um, are given the choice whether they want to have children early. So a lot more children, are go a lot more women are going out to work. They join an increasingly sedentary lifestyle. They have their children late, they have fewer children. So that could increase the risk of breast cancer. So you find that in low and middle income countries, the incidence of breast cancer is increasing, mainly because of these changes in lifestyle. Now, the other thing that I'm going to talk about is secondary prevention. Primary prevention is generally not very successful. So secondary prevention means detecting a cancer early so that your mortality is reduced. And in low and middle income countries, uh, there's no population-based screening mammography program because of the cost. And also, um, women may not come for screening. The other issue about screening mammogram is that it's generally not very useful in younger women. And that's another thing in low and middle income countries, women present at a younger age. The median age of presentation is 50 years old compared to the Western countries, the developed countries, where the average age of presentation is 60 years old. So generally, screening mammography may not be so useful. 
The other thing besides the cost is that there are no huge randomized control trials on screening mammography in low and middle income countries. So we will not know whether they are going to reduce mortality as it has been shown in the Western world where all the randomized control trials on mammography have been done. The other methods of early detection such as breast self-examination and clinical breast examination, the effect is largely unknown because the Shanghai trial on breast self-examination has shown that there has been no decrease in mortality in the group that practice breast self-examination. Um, there is no randomized control trial on clinical breast examination that has showed any reduction in mortality rate. There is a randomized control trial on screening uh, clinical breast examination in India, but so far there has been no uh, long-term results that show that there has been a decrease in mortality from breast cancer by uh, clinical breast examination. Mm -hmm.